Yes, I did vote for the Compassionate Use Act. I was like, you can keep your morphine. I'm going to go outside, I'm going to smoke my joint, and I'm going to feel a whole lot better. Look, I don't want another pill. Do you get I don't want another pill? Am I the only person out of four million that doesn't support this marijuana dispensary madness? So I stand here today as someone who's going to die because city council and other legislative members can't clarify the laws for people like me. While the rest of the country was preoccupied with the biggest economic downturn since the Great Depression, the medical marijuana industry in Los Angeles exploded. Estimates vary, but there may be as many as 800 dispensaries open for business in LA. That's more than the number of Starbucks in the city. An ordinance recently passed by the LA City Council, however, is about to change all that. Today, it's easy to gain access to medical pot in California, even if you suffer from something like depression or anxiety. Once you've got a recommendation from a doctor, you can go to weedmaps.com and choose a dispensary near you. And when you arrive at a dispensary, helpful staffers are on hand to tell you all you need to know about their products. This is the Black Diamond Kush. This is one of our most beautiful flowers. It's an indica dominant hybrid, but it's pretty mellow and relaxing, so you can use it all day. This is the closest thing to marijuana legalization our country has seen since the 1930s. And that's got people on the front lines of the pot wars concerned. We have people in the area that are, you know, teaching at the schools, LA High right down the street, and we started hearing anecdotal evidence of, well, you know, the marijuana is showing up at the schools. On Pico, we found out, well, there's 14 of them there. And then I found out there were a couple up on Wilshire. So it was like, wait a minute, what's, what, what's going on? I'm very concerned that, you know, who knows who's running some of these? Um, are these the same characters that I would like to see put out of business, which are the gangs? City attorney Carmen Trutanich is worried that nobody is testing the marijuana in L.A. Just assume that um, there's a salad in front of you and I just did this. Now, would any of you eat a salad with that sprayed on it? District Attorney Stephen Cooley believes that dispensaries that sell marijuana to patients aren't true collectives and are therefore in violation of state law. Vast, vast, vast majority, about 100 percent of dispensaries in Los Angeles County and the city are operating illegally. There are none that are operating legally in L.A. County? None that we know of. And that's a big concern for medical marijuana activists like Don Duncan of Americans for Safe Access. I'm discouraged to see a sort of political posturing from the district attorney's office and to, to a certain extent from the city attorney's office that speaks more to their bias and their opinion about medical cannabis than to their responsibilities to the city. Thirteen years after Californians passed the Compassionate Use Act, there's still a great deal of uncertainty about what's legal and what's not. When you hear Mr. Cooley talk, you hear Mr. Tanich talk, or you, you talk to an average police officer that you know, I talk to all the time. They just want some clarity. Of course, dispensary owners like Daniel Sosa have been operating in a legal gray area for years. And we've never had a law enforcement issue, never had a raid, you know, knock on wood at either collective. So we're lucky. In 2007, there were at least 50 raids in, in Los Angeles. 2008, there were several dozen. In 2009, it's still continuing. And no one has a bigger stake in the pot wars than the seriously ill people who benefit from medical cannabis. Carla Bailey is the co-chair of the Los Angeles Commission on HIV. When I got my diagnosis in 95, I was so sick from AZT, I couldn't explain it to people if I, if I tried. I got smart, though. My niece came home, she said, Auntie, I'm going to twist you one up. Mike Olivari, who suffers from muscular dystrophy, moved to California from New Jersey on the recommendation of his doctor. He said, my legal recommendation to you is to move to California, because if I tell you to do anything else, I'll get arrested and so will you. So I, mean, I left all that to come here, and now I'm here because they're talking about shutting it down. So how exactly did we get here? In 1996, Californians passed Prop 215, which legalized the medicinal use of marijuana. The only problem was that marijuana, medicinal or otherwise, was still illegal in the eyes of the federal government. When medical marijuana dispensaries started opening a few years later, the Drug Enforcement Administration raided them. But despite the risk, dispensaries continued to open. Concerned about the proliferation of dispensaries, the LA City Council passed an interim control ordinance in 2007. 
Nearly 200 dispensaries registered with the city, and a moratorium was placed on new dispensaries. However, a hardship exemption in the ordinance created a loophole that hundreds of medical pot entrepreneurs have exploited over the past two years. In 2009, Attorney General Eric Holder instructed federal prosecutors to stop targeting medical marijuana patients and caregivers who are in compliance with state law. Which brings us to January 26th of this year, when the LA City Council passed an ordinance regulating medical marijuana dispensaries in the city. The goal was to bring clarity to the medical marijuana industry. But at this point, the only thing that's clear is that the transitional process will be difficult. Under the ordinance, several hundred dispensaries that opened after the 2007 moratorium will be forced to close. I don't know if they really have the resources to close that many down at once. They haven't demonstrated that they do. Unfortunately, they will make examples of people, and we're going to have some good people uh, tangled up with the bad people who are prosecuted in that if that happens. New zoning restrictions create buffer zones between dispensaries, sensitive use areas such as schools and residences. The new rules will force all but a few of the remaining 137 pre-moratorium dispensaries to relocate. And the question as to whether the sale of medical marijuana in dispensaries complies with California state law is something that will have to be worked out in the courts. Whatever happens, it's clear that virtually everyone involved in the debate wants to make sure that people with serious illnesses like cancer and AIDS have access to medical marijuana. Many people, however, are skeptical of the claims of other so-called patients. You are a criminal, sir. No, I'm not because... You are a criminal. I am, I am actually under the influence of medical marijuana. <laughs> well, actually, a doctor prescribed... Was it Dr. Dre? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the deal? Is medical marijuana just a gateway policy to marijuana legalization? You know, it is a stepping stone towards, towards legalization. Um, you can't really deny that it is. While arrests for most crimes in California have decreased, marijuana arrests are on the rise. It's no coincidence that the Volstead Act was repealed in the middle of the Depression. You have to make, your, you have to make choices here. Just like in 1933, when prohibition was repealed, Californians today are wondering why the government is wasting so much money on a war that can't be won. That's one of the biggest reasons that I'm in favor of change, changing this drug laws, because we don't have the money. California Assemblyman Tom Amiana recently introduced a bill to tax and regulate marijuana in the state. The bill is being taken seriously, in part because California is facing a $20 billion budget deficit. Regulating marijuana like alcohol would save taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars in enforcement costs, and it would generate more than a billion dollars in tax revenue. And if politicians in Sacramento don't change the law, California voters will have an opportunity to legalize pot in November. Oaksterdam University is sponsoring a statewide ballot initiative for 2010 to legalize for adult use. Just a few years ago, pot legalization was nothing more than a pipe dream. Is marijuana legalization really a possibility? Our country needs legalization. The world needs it. I'd say within the next couple, next couple three years for sure, we'll find, we'll find marijuana legalized. I'm all in favor of what everybody's doing and trying to decriminalize it. I will vote for it. But I, that's the way this country works, and I think one of the things that makes it great. I'm very optimistic that we will be the first state to legalize cannabis in California, and I'm very proud to be a part of the movement. Consider this. In 1996, Prop 215 passed with 56% of the vote. What percentage of Californians are in favor of marijuana legalization today? You guessed it, 56%. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.